Man City plan forward shortlist. Liverpool want Leeds winger. Dortmund have a new goalkeeper in mind. Barca may regret Suarez sale and a chance to round up all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off, and Manchester City have apparently drawn up a two-man striking shortlist should they go into the transfer market this summer after losing Sergio Aguero. The striker's contract runs out at the end of the season and it's unclear whether or not he will be staying with the club. So if he doesn't, both Romelu Lukaku and Danny Ings are on the list. One of these makes a little bit more sense than the other one. In the case of Romelu Lukaku, not only is he going to cost way more money than Ings, not only are they going to have to prize him away from Inter Milan and if they manage to qualify for the Champions League, there's not actually any concernable reason to believe that going to Manchester City would be a huge step up. Inter Milan are already a pretty big side, if you didn't know. And lastly but not least, he used to play for Manchester United. And I'm not saying that Lukaku is die-hard Manchester United through and through, but it may play on his mind just a little bit. Having said that, look at how the club treated him and his time there wasn't exactly fantastic. Who knows? Maybe he could decide to do the unthinkable and join their biggest rivals. Like I mentioned before, if you're trying to buy Lukaku, it only moves to Inter in 2019 for £75 million. They're going to have to pay an extraordinary amount of money. In my opinion, and he's not on this two-man shortlist, well, not that we know of. In my opinion, if you're going to pay £75 or more for Lukaku, you might as well just go for Haaland. You might as well chuck the whatever it is, £20-25 million on top of that and go and buy Erling Haaland. But to the other player on the list, and it's Danny Ings. Is he affordable? You'd like to think so. You'd probably think that Southampton, who are quite notorious for sending their players to other Premier League teams, especially Liverpool, um, would be open to sending Danny Ings, especially if they don't make any European football. The striker is obviously found the form of his life whilst down on the South Coast, so much so that he really wants to take a step back up to a Champions League club. Whilst he was at Liverpool, it's impossible to judge him. He was so unlucky with injuries and spent, I think he was there for four years and spent two of them injured or two and a half of, of them on the sideline. Eventually, he got the low move to Southampton and that was made permanent. And Jurgen Klopp actually commented saying what a character Danny Ings was and was so positive despite the fact he had so many injuries. He obviously believes in himself. He's shown it on the pitch. And would he be good enough at Manchester City? I absolutely think so. Look at the way Ings plays. He plays in a very good footballing Southampton side and gets a load of goals in a team which don't create as many chances as Manchester City. So if you put City's form, you put the way they create chances, and you put all of Ings' strengths together, I actually think he'd be a very, very good signing. I'm not saying he's going to be on the cheap, but he'd be less than the £75 million, apparently, that Lukaku would cost. Moving on, though, and to another good deal, and actually talking of Liverpool, Rafinha is in their sights. He is the Leeds winger who only joined in the summer for £17 million from Rennes, and it looks like just one year later, he could be on the move again. This would fit in perfectly against all the suggestions that Liverpool do not have enough squad depth he would be a massive massive help honestly i don't know how Liverpool fans feel like this but shakiri and origi just aren't good enough they've proven time and time and again they're not able to step up to the level of salamane and Firmino. don't get me wrong those front three are unbelievable and it's difficult to reach their level but you've got to have some good backups the signing of diogo jota last summer was inspired when fit he has been absolutely sensational arguably liverpool's best signing of the summer and maybe some Thiago fans will have something to say. Anyway, Jota, brilliant. When he fills in for the likes of Mane or Salah, Firmino, whoever, amazing. If you can add Rafinha to this as well, this is basically building another line of a brilliant front three. If you add on top of that another striker, as has been suggested, not really in the Firmino role, but a more out-and-out -out striker, who knows? Liverpool could be back for some insane squad depth, barring any major injuries again. As for Leeds United, this will obviously be a tough one to take, but it looks as though Marcelo Bielsa is willing to accept it, only if he can get a replacement, and apparently that's going to come in the shape of Douglas Costa. His loan move back to Bayern Munich has exactly worked out. He hasn't appeared in too many Bundesliga games, and it's clear that when he moves back to Turin, he's on loan from Juventus, he does not want to stay at the club. Elsewhere, though, and Jurgen Klopp has apparently said to the board if they can't bring in Rafinha, he'd also like to look at the likes of Vinicius Junior from Real Madrid. That one will be very, very difficult. And Pedro Goncalves, apparently the next Bruno Fernandes from Sporting. Next up, and we move to Borussia Dortmund and apparently their search for a new goalkeeper. There hasn't been too much from the club at the moment, but Lazio shot stopper Thomas Strakosha has said that he loves the club in a recent interview. He likes the idea of the stadium, the fans, the ambition, and if there is interest, he can't lie, he would be interested in moving to the side. 
That's because, well, he's found his place in between the sticks for Lazio, taken by 39-year-old Pepe Reina. Strakosha has been brilliant the last few seasons for Lazio. He started the season well, then got COVID, and since then, Pepe Reina has been preferred in goal. This is obviously very difficult for him to take after being number one, but personally, I wouldn't be so hasty about moving clubs. At the moment, there's a lot of reason to suggest that both Hits and Berkey at Dortmund are not exactly filled with a lot of trust from the club, so they could be looking at a new shot stopper. And at 25 years old, the Albanian will present a massive signing for potentially the next decade or so. But the thing is, like I was mentioning, Reyn is 39. Realistically, come the end of the season, Pepe Reyna might have another year in him. Potentially another year. For someone who's 25 year old is Trakosha, I'm pretty sure he could wait out the next few months and then take back the number one spot. It's not like he's fighting with someone younger than him or someone the same age and he could potentially be sat on the bench for the next 10 years. Whether he needs to move or not, I'm not entirely sure. But, like I said, if Dortmund don't have any trust in their goalkeepers and they're willing to pay for him and make him the number one, I think it would be an absolutely fantastic move for him. Next up, though, and to Luis Suarez and whether or not Barcelona may regret selling him. Apparently, the club were not very happy with him last summer and decided to just kick him out. Ronald Koeman telling him over the phone that he wasn't part of his plans. This obviously did nothing to help the fact that Lionel Messi really had some bad feelings against the club, but that's neither here nor there. His best friend now plays at Atletico Madrid and sits pretty at the top of the table. Last night, he managed to score two goals in what was actually a not very good draw at home to Celta Vigo after conceding in the last couple of minutes. But it does mean, like I mentioned, that eight points clear at the top of that Liga with a game in hand. The eight points clear of both Barcelona and Real Madrid, who sit tied in second and third place. What it does mean, though, is that Suarez has now got 15 in his first 17 La Liga games. So there's only one other player to do that this century for the same club, and that is Cristiano Ronaldo. Not exactly bad company to keep for Suarez, although actually, if you look at his whole career, it's no surprise that he's being mentioned up with the footballing goal-scoring gods because he is that good. Can Barcelona, can the board, can Ronald Koeman especially, honestly look at themselves in the mirror and think they've done a good deal if they sell their main striker directly to a rival who has then gone on to win La Liga? I mean, I know there are some transfer blunders in there that may or may not work out in hindsight, but this surely has got to be one of the worst transfer decisions in recent times, coming from a club who love to spend hundreds of millions on players that don't really work out. This would be an absolute shocker, as I mentioned, if Suarez can literally lead a direct rival to the title. Lastly but not least, send a quick round up of the rest of the day's news and transfer bits and bobs that you might have missed from the last couple of days. Robert Lewandowski yesterday fired Bayern Munich into the final of the Club World Cup with two goals against Egyptian side Al Ali. Next up, and Tottenham are apparently interested in bringing back Aaron Ramsey to the Premier League, although going from Arsenal to Juventus and then to Tottenham may be a bit of a stretch. Apparently PSG, after finding out they wouldn't sign Deli Ali, failed the last minute attempt on transfer deadline day to bring in West Ham's Manuel Lanzini. And lastly but not least, if Chelsea are going to sell Ross Barkley in the summer, apparently they're going to want a minimum of £40 million. Not so sure Aston Villa will be stumping up that kind of money. So there you have it then. That's all from me. Check out everything else we've got going on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.